I believe the ancient world had direct contact with fallen cherubim, though they called them things like Lamassu and Shadu. And if you want to look those up, this is how it's spelled. Lamassu is L-A-M-A-S-S-U, and then Shadu is S-H-E-D-U. Uh, so you can look them up and, you know, you can know that I'm not, I'm giving you correct information. Now, I believe, <clears throat> I believe it's possible that the book of Revelation is prophesying a return of these fallen creatures. Think about it. These scorpion things, fallen cherubim, they torment men for five months, yet the men cannot die, presumably because of the mark of the beast. How much more horrifying is that if it's fallen cherubim, if it's a fallen angel, rather than some little scorpion thing. Now that's scary enough. You, 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 if you have a transgenic mutant scorpion thing, that's bad. Like that's scary enough. Helicopters, drones, that's scary enough. But connecting this with the book of Ezekiel, what if it is actually fallen cherubim? You do not get worse than that. That's as bad as it gets. That, 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 that's comparable. Satan himself is a fallen cherub, as far as we know, as far as we understand. That's, that's, that's having Satan physically torment you for five months without ceasing. Of course they would want to die, but they can't for some reason. For some reason, they can't. And there's a lot of theories on that. Uh, we, we, we don't know the full answer yet, but there's a lot of theories on that. Imagine how horrifying that is. That is the worst thing imaginable. I can't imagine anything worse than that. Um, but I believe that it's possible if interdimensional contact is ever made through the use of, you know, gravitons at CERN or some other some other laboratory like that, it will either be those fallen cherubim or the king over them that humanity will actually end up in contact with. You know, there's areas at CERN that's located today that's thought to have been dedicated to the same false god in ancient times. Where CERN is located right now, there's a, there was an ancient belief. They actually had to stop construction because they found ancient Roman ruins. But ancient Romans believed that this was uh, th th this was a polyacum that was the, uh, the, the, the name of the, the commune, uh, you could call it that. But they believed that that's where the bottomless pit was. And when they discovered all the, when, when you know, in modern times, when they discovered all these artifacts, they had to stop construction of the LHC at CERN because uh, they had to excavate these ruins. But maybe that dedication, maybe that dedication, that ancient dedication to Apollyon will manifest itself in the near future. So we may actually see a modern day repeat of the Tower of Babel. Uh, or a fulfillment of Zechariah 5, which that, again, in itself would be a, a whole different video. So basically what it all comes down to is the locusts in Revelation 9 are fallen angels. They're fallen cherubim. They're the, they're, they, they are, you, you could call them the fallen watchers that the book of Enoch talks about. They will be let loose again. In, in prophecy. Ancient Jews believed it. Actually, a lot of ancient uh, pagan religions even uh, surrounding the nation of Israel uh, believed it. That these things would make a return someday. These are the fallen watchers. They're the fallen cherubim. They're the antithesis of the cherubim that guard the throne of God. These guard the throne of Abaddon or Apollyon. Um, this entity has a lot of different names. Uh, the, the, <laughs> there's, there's, there's connections to Leviathan and Behemoth from uh, Job, which again would probably have to be a whole other video. Um, but yeah, that, that's what the, these are fallen angels. These fallen angels are actually going to be allowed to torment humankind for five months at some point in the future. Regardless what your rapture belief is, isn't that something that the church should be talking about? Correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I, I'm looking at the chat. Um, 
I, I can't see everything, but I'm, I'm trying to see as much as I can. Don't you think that that's something the church should be talking about and they're silent on? Most of the mainstream church will not deal in prophecy. They will not open the book of Revelation, even though it's the only book that promises you a blessing if you delve into it. They won't look into it. And that's why I want to do this pick, uh, th th this Peck underground church thing. Because we're the church that's going to have to instruct everybody else. we got to do it today. It doesn't matter rapture belief. If you're a preacher, that's fine. We have to do it now then before we're, rapture, we're uh, raptured out of here. If you're a pre-wrath guy, great. Even more. We need to do this now before the persecution really starts coming and we don't have opportunity to do so anymore. Uh, so if it's pre-wrath, then great. That's even more reason. If you don't believe in a rapture at all, even more reason that we need to be prepared for this stuff. This is the stuff, no matter what rapture view you believe in, it doesn't matter what your rapture view is. We need to get a hold of this stuff, and we need to be talking about it in church. We need to uh, equip the church with this type of thing. Because when this stuff hits, no one's going to know what's going on. There, The church is going to be just as confused as the Pharisees were when Jesus was born. And when Jesus had his three and a half year ministry, and when Jesus was crucified, the church is going to be just as confused about fulfilled Bible prophecy today as the Jews were, as the Pharisees were, about prophecy fulfilled in their day relating to Jesus. Think about that. That's scary. That, that should give us a lot of humility. That, that should teach us a humble attitude when it comes to this stuff. So it's not just about being right. It's not about having the, the, the correct view of prophecy, because probably none of us do. Um, who, who had the, the right view of prophecy when Jesus was born? Uh, um, you got the wise men. You know, we don't know how many they are. Uh, we assume three because of the three gifts, but we don't, we don't really know that. You have the wise men. You got a couple people here and there that kind of knew, uh, 12 apostles, but even they needed a lot of, <laughs> they needed a lot of uh, convincing disciples at the time. They, they, they needed a lot of convincing. What hope do we have on, 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 his, on his second coming, on his return, on Jesus' return? What hope do we have? We know some things, but I really do believe that it's going to be one of those things that we will look back when we're in the kingdom, when we're in our glorified bodies, we will look back on scripture, and then, then we will see how it all fits together. So I, I think we need to be, today, we need to be humble. We need to explore all possibilities and get really good. We need to get really good at having conversations with one another. We need to get really good at not being offended if somebody else has a different rapture view or, or a different whatever. We need, to, we need to work really hard at not getting offended by that. And if you are offended by it, then turn that offense into motivation to study and show yourself approved. Show how you can refute whatever thing that somebody is saying that you don't like, that you don't agree with. I don't agree with all rapture views. So you use that as motivation to learn more about your view and then become an expert on your opponent's view. Whatever your opponent's view is, become an expert on that. Show that you know more about that thing than they do. I, I, I care about helping people, serving people. I care about serving people as every Christian should. I don't care what their status is in the church. We all should be serving one another. So there's real power in that. And I don't say that boastfully. I don't say it pridefully. I just say it that there is real power in knowing your opponent's views better than he does.